Test, test. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Take my face mask off now. Good morning. I can't tell you how glad I am to be back. I have had a trip that I would have rather not taken. Um, it's been horrible, but I am on the mend, even though it still might not sound like it. A um, <clears throat> couple of announcements this morning. Um, there will be an SPRC meeting on Tuesday evening at 6.30, so don't forget about that. Um, there will also be a board meeting on, when, on, on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Also, please note that next Sunday is the children's Christmas program, and we will um, also be having a double baptism, so I'm super excited about that. Uh, on Thursday, December 21st, we will be having what is called a blue Christmas service. Christmas is not always a happy occasion for everyone, um, and so a blue Christmas is one that is a little bit more somber. Um, it gives people who have experienced loss 
um, an opportunity to have Christmas that isn't the, you know, the um, robust joy to the world and those type of things. That service will be at 6 p.m. It's for anyone who's, who wants to come. It's, it's especially for those who have lost a loved one, um, e either in this, in this last year or I at any time that you are still um, grieving because we know that grief is not something that you do and it's done. It is a reoccurring thing. And so come to that service. I, I do believe that you will enjoy that. The first time I ever experienced a Blue Christmas service was at my home church right after my mother passed away. And the pastor there did a Blue Christmas service. And it was the most meaningful experience I had ever had at Christmas. And when I answered the, my call into ministry, um, I vowed that I would always, no matter where I was, would have a blue Christmas service. And so that will be at 6 p.m. on December 21st. It's on December 21st because that is the longest night of the year. Okay, Christmas Eve is on Sunday this year. That means that the fourth Sunday of Advent is technically the morning of December 24th. And so we will have um, our regularly scheduled um, Sunday worship that morning um, at 9 a.m. Um, and going through the final um, Advent series that we are um, working on, which is on God's redeeming grace. And so I hope that you will come. Um, I know that there's a lot of busy things going on in, on Christmas Eve, but I do hope that you will be there, be here for that service as well. Um, and then Christmas Eve will be at 5 p.m. So just in last year it was at 4.30, but we, I moved it just a half hour just to give it a little bit more um, spiritual feel with the darkness and those kinds of things. Um, I know I have at least one who has an announcement. Becky, do you have an announcement that you'd like to make? Okay. Good morning. First of all, mission committee, we are not having a meeting today. So just so you know, we are not having a meeting. Uh, tonight, we are having our soup supper. Please plan to attend. The union carolers are going to be here. So um, we're going to meet at the church at 4 o'clock to go caroling. And then we'll come back and be here at 5.30. And then um, the carolers perform at 6 o'clock and we'll eat at 6.30, so please plan to attend. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Debbie Miller, and I need to let you know that I am retiring as the treasurer of the church. We are trying to get Ron in a situation that possibly he'll start to feel better in a home situation, so we're going to take him to Melanie's, bless her heart, and her whole basement we, we will be able to move around and live in. Um, we're hoping that in a couple of months he'll be able to move around and he wants to come home. So we all work towards that. But because I'm retiring, somebody, I would like you to think in your heart how to serve the church in another way. It's, it's not a hard job. It is something that's consistent, because I thought of that too. Could I do this part-time? But if that's not fair to you as a church. So if you think that possibly you can write a few checks and make some uh, balance sheets work, think about contacting uh, Ryan Shuhart as head of the finance chair, finance committee. Pastor, Pastor Michelle also would be. I thank you for the love through the years. It was a bit of a hard decision. It is a very hard decision to make something like that. No one wants to have to leave home. Um, but this is the right thing for your family, Debbie. And we are going to miss you, and we love you, and we will be praying that you are able to return home. And, and yes, so for anyone, yes, thank you. Debbie does a fantastic job in the finances of this church, and you um, and your family will, and Ron will be sorely missed, and we pray that you will be returning home soon. So yes, if there is anyone that has any, uh, has a knack for accounting, um, 
it's not always, it's not, you know, it's not always something that's in everybody's repertoire. But, um, you know, if you have a knack for accounting and keeping books and those kinds of things and would like to serve the church in, in, a, in, a, in a way that, that you can use those talents and gifts, that is the way that we serve God, is using the things that we have been given, um, our gifts, our talents. This morning we're going to hear and Greg Dietrich use his own talents to play Christmas music from, on his trumpet for, for, during offering. And we also use our talents to serve the church in leadership roles. And, in, and we need somebody who can step into that role for accounting and finance so that we can continue to flourish and grow um, in our ministries um, for Jesus Christ. Are there any other? Mary Jo. I have an announcement. Also on the 21st of December, Lydia Circle is scheduled to meet. We will meet at my home in the country. But we will meet at 3 o'clock, and we will be done in plenty of time for the Blue Christmas service. So 3 p.m. at my home on the 21st for Lydia Circle. Thank you. Any others? Yes. Um, we are having today our dress rehearsal for our Christmas program. So if all the kids that are, are here after service, go right upstairs to the music room, okay? And we'll get your costumes and everything on. And then we will get going on our rehearsal, okay? Anything else? One more thing. I think it's on. One more thing. We, we're singing this congregational hymn, Now is the Time to Come, come to Worship. There's four measures of introduction. Last week, we kind of had a little bit of a rocky start, so just know there's four measures, and then we start singing. And it's for the congregation, and the choir is waiting until the last verse to walk in, so don't think, where are they at? <laughs> okay, so uh, just trying to make everything smooth, correct? Thank you. All right. If there are no other announcements for the good of the community, then yes, come. Now is the time to worship.
God. Okay. If you join in unison for the opening prayer, it's found in your bulletin, possibly on the screen. Mighty Creator, glorious Redeemer, gracious Sustainer, we come before you with awe and thanksgiving for the revelation of yourself in the babe and the manger. In him you were born of flesh, that we might be born of spirit. In him you gave us one to share our humanity and reveal your will. In him you gave us a model of complete trust in you, even in times of testing, rejection, suffering, and death. In him you gave us a companion on the human journey so we might experience salvation hope. May our lives reflect our gratitude to you for this incredible gift. We pray in the name of our Savior and Helper, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Okay, our first hymn will be He Touched Me. It's number 367 in your hymnal. It'll be up on the screen. And stand if you're able. may be seated. Today's scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 3 verses 21 through 26. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through the faith of Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to demonstrate at the present time his own righteousness so that he is righteous and he justifies the one who has the faith of Jesus. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now we'll have the Katush family light the Advent candle. Unending love, 
amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Amazing grace The earth shall soon dissolve like snow The sun forbear to shine But God who called me Below will be forever mine, will be forever mine. You are forever mine. Thank you, Peg. Our next hymn will be O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 230 in your hymnal, or it'll be up on the screen if you're stand if you will stand if you're able. Thank you.
Here, please remain standing as we hear the Gospel of John proclaimed to us this morning. I, I, um, I would like to read the, the Gospel this morning, and, and so um, you can follow along on the screen. Of course, I'm going to read from my Bible, so it might not flow exactly, but um, I love to hold this when I'm reading Scripture. So hear these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. And what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? And Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do, not, you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did send the Son into the world God did not send the world, Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of God in scripture. The word of God among us. The word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. All right. It is children's time. And I'm going to have you come up and sit, sit here in the front, but I'm going to put my face mask on so I can make sure I keep you all keep y'all safe. And I'll have to, have to bring, the, bring the treats out this way so y'all can, so that y'all can get what you want when it's time. Not yet, will. <laughs> Not quite. Can I can I come through? Can I come through? Okay, let me just make one little step here, one step here. Can I come through? All right. All right. What do I have here? Whiteboard. It's a whiteboard. It's a whiteboard. What do you do with it? You draw on it. You, just, you draw on it. You make notes on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what happens? Let's see here. Let me just see here. Uh, <clears throat> um, I should be better at math, right, because I have an accounting background myself. But for the sake of this lesson, um, what if I wrote 2 plus 2 equals that? Is that right? No. No. Is that right? That's not right, is it? You, you are so right, Jocelyn. You are so right. It is 4. So what? So so if I made a mistake, can I, I, can, I can erase it, right? Yeah, I can erase it. Okay, now, let me see. Um, two plus two. Um, um, let's see. Um, let's see, it is, is it that? 
No, it's not that either, is it? Okay, um, uh, let's see. So uh, what happens if, uh, can, I, can, I, can I get rid of it? Yeah. I can get rid of it. Let's just get rid of the whole thing and try a new, uh, try a new one. I am not very good at this. Let's just get rid of it. We, we, we got rid of the whole thing, right? Let's just get rid of the whole thing. All right, let's see. Give me another one. Just give me another one. Let's give it, do a simple one for, for simple. Let's do, that's simple, but let's do one for the little ones. What, what do you have, Jocelyn? Okay. All right. For, let's see. Um, let's see. Um, I think it must be this. Is that that? No. no, it's not that. It's not that, is it? All right. So I can erase it, though, right? Somebody tell me what it is. Just yell it out. What is it? Five. It's five. It's five. That's the right answer, right? You know something? Jesus does something pretty special for us. Jesus gives us a special gift. It's called grace. G-R-A-C-E. Grace is something that God gives to us that erases our mistakes, that helps us continue to grow in his love. And so if we make a mistake in school, let's say maybe we, um, we pick on somebody that's, that uh, we probably shouldn't pick on, or, or maybe um, uh, we say something unkind to someone, or maybe we don't behave our parents when they tell us to make our beds, right? We can say sorry, and God forgives us. That's what's called grace. It means God's forgiveness of us. And we can, and God gives it to us all the time. We have it. It's always ours. And so anytime we make a mistake, God, yeah, God, God's grace erases those mistakes. And we can start again every single day. We get to start over and over and over again every day and become better people all the time. Isn't that pretty cool? That's pretty cool. So why don't we say a prayer? And thank God for that grace. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for always giving us your grace that forgives us, that erases our mistakes and helps us to grow into better people every single day. We thank you that you will always give it to us every single time we ask. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you can get your treats. Watch this table here, though. Watch this table. <laughs> All right. I'm holding on to the holy cup here. <laughs> All right, you can sneak underneath me, Jameson. All right. Did you all get something? What? How about some virtual five? Give me virtual five. Give me a virtual five. All right. Let's do a virtual one. All right. Can I have a virtual one? All right. Give me a virtual one, Gage. Give me a virtual one. Give me a virtual one. All right. Give me a virtual one. All right. All right. Did y'all get something? Oh, good. That looks yummy. That looks yummy. Last but not least, my buddy Gage. All right. I'm running out of snacks up here, folks. I need to get some more. <clears throat> I can take this back off now. Y'all hear me? <clears throat> All right. Let's pray. Open wide the window of our spirits, O oh Lord, and fill us full of your light. Open wide the door of our hearts that we may receive and entertain you with all our powers of adoration and love. Amen. The heartbeat of humanity is linked to the very life of the triune God in all holiness, righteousness, and in perfect divine love. When God created human beings in God's own image, it was this perfect image that we had our being, an image of loving relationship with God with each other, and for the created world, 
that God gave to human beings to care for. It is to this that John Wesley, our Methodist forebear, wrote in his sermon entitled, The General Deliverance. The human beings are creatures capable of God, capable of knowing, loving, and obeying his creator. This human capacity for God from the beginning was meant as loving relationship, a relationship where we live out of God's own righteousness and with the liberty to choose good versus evil according to the direction of one's own understanding. Yet in the fall of humanity, we lost this image of God. Having used our liberty to choose good versus evil, we chose evil over good with unbelief at the core of that choice. And thus, we were separated from the righteous image of God and the capacity to love in the purity of love that God's image is. Therefore, God's redeeming Love embarked on a journey of restoring the image of God that was lost to humanity, and it started with the incarnation. God took on flesh and lived as one of us because of the unrelenting grace of God. In the United Methodist Church, our theology of God's redeeming grace is based on what John Wesley preached as the scriptural way of salvation in his sermon by the same name. In John Wesley's perception of scripture, the ordo salutis, Latin for order of salvation, was not linear, but rather cyclical, recurrent. God's redeeming grace for Wesley was first and foremost available to all. Wesley often described God's redeeming grace like, like a house whereby the porch is the place where provenient grace pursues us, woos us, and convicts us that we need what is inside that house. The image of Jesus, Jesus knocking at the door that can be seen in many churches is the door of our very soul. And as we become more and more aware of our need for something greater than the world can provide, or even greater than ourselves. That knock, it gets louder and louder. For some of us, we've always felt God's provenient grace, and for others, it's something that takes a lot longer. Once we say yes to Jesus, whether it's in confirmation class or later on in life, the door of the house is flung wide open. The doorway of the house, in Wesley's analogy, is God's justifying grace, which is another word for pardon. It is the forgiveness of all our sins and our acceptance with God, an act of the unrelenting grace of God. We've all been there. We've done things that we regret or wish that we hadn't done. We wish that we could wipe the slate clean. On our own, we cannot. But by the amazing, redeeming grace of God, we are forgiven of our outward actions, of our past, present, and future sins. On the day that Jesus was crucified and gave up his spirit to the Father in an agonizing death. All the sins of humanity were buried once and for all. The work of the triune God was accomplished, or as Jesus said, it is finished. The outpouring of God's amazing grace swept over the earth so that Christ's very own righteousness could be imputed to us. In his sermon entitled, the Lord, our righteousness. John Wesley writes, quote, But when is it imputed? When they believe, he says. In that very hour that they believe in Jesus, the righteousness of Christ is theirs. It is imputed to everyone that believes. As soon as he believes, faith and righteousness of Christ are inseparable, end quote. By our faith, 
and acceptance of God's saving acts through Christ, we are made right with God through the justifying grace of God and credited with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That means that by our yes to Jesus, the door of the house is flung wide open and we are immediately forgiven of all our sins and seen as righteous to God and born again from above in an act of the unrelenting grace of God. When Nicodemus goes to Jesus, it is in the cover of darkness. That is important. Because in the, in the Gospel of John, darkness has symbolic significance. Darkness is met metaphorically as separation from the presence of God. Nicodemus is a Pharisee and a teacher of God's laws and words found in the Hebrew Scriptures. That Nicodemus is wrestling with the things that Jesus is saying is not to say that he, he is lacking in, in any intelligence or even in total unbelief, or he wouldn't be there. He understands, at least in part, that Jesus must be from God based on the signs themselves. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God, he says. But not having yet been born from above, he cannot have complete knowledge of the depth of what Jesus is saying. He cannot grasp that, that not only is Jesus from God, he is God incarnate. Because God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but may have eternal life an act of the unrelenting grace of God. So Jesus gives him something that he can relate to. That Jesus says, whoever believes in him will have eternal life is not just some future far-off reality, but is present reality. That the Israelites only had to look upon the bronze serpent in the wilderness and be saved was a present reality for them. Jesus is saying that by believing in him, it is the same. It offers us eternal life as a present reality because we are forgiven and seen as righteous before God now, not just upon our death. Because Jesus was lifted up and died on a cross once for all, in our place for the atonement of sin. He paid the penalty that was ours, and therefore eternal life is not some, something held in ambience until the, fu the, the believer's future, but begins in the believer's present, in the very moment that they say yes to Jesus for themselves. This is the power of God's grace. To be born from above is to be born again through the lifting up of Jesus on the cross and in the sending of the Holy Spirit who comes to every believer to live within them for their continual inward transformation into the image of God, an act of the unrelenting grace of God. John Wesley, in his sermon on, entitled The New Birth, termed it this way, quote, If any doctrines with the whole compass, within the whole compass of Christianity may be properly termed fundamental, they are doubtless these two, the doctrine of justification and that of the new birth, the former relating to that great work which God does for us in forgiving our sins, the latter to the great work which God does in us in renewing our fallen nature, end quote. To be born from above is to be born into a whole new spiritual life in Christ Jesus with the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit within us, where our human nature with its propensity for sin is set free 
to finally understand the things of God, capable of knowing God and fully loving God, others, and the created world. To continually be molded and shaped into the image of God in all holiness and righteousness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, drawn closer and closer into the heart of God and into intimate relationship with God. Jesus' words challenge both Nicodemus and us to move beyond what is on the surface of things to something so much deeper. That this new birth gives us access to God that we never had before. We are able to be in an intimate relationship with God that we could not have had otherwise. Being born again from above sets us free to participate in the liberating and sanctifying grace of God that is work within us, molding and shaping us into the image of God in an, un, in an act of the unrelenting grace of God. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do we have any joys or concerns that we um, need to lift up this day right after I find a pen? Pen, pen, pen. If I can't find one, I'll use a marker. Go ahead and talk. I'm listening. Okay. I'll start things off. John Teal for SPRC committee. I want to share a great joy. I'm 65 years old. <laughs> now, my birthday was this summer. Thanks for remembering me with cards and stuff. But anyway, I'm 65 years old. Somewhere, somewhere around 40 or 45 years ago, somewhere between the birth of my first child and me turning 18, I think it might have been watching my child open their first present. It might have been me realizing I was getting more clothes than toys. But I started to find that there was a greater joy in giving gifts than receiving gifts. How many people feel that way? Okay. I counted like 160 arms. So, back here by the tech stand, we have this lovely, lovely little wrapped box. And on it, it says love offering. And I would like you to contemplate how joyful you'd like to be this Christmas and whether you'd like to give to the love offering that we will share with Pastor Michelle, Sharon, and Trish, also known as our staff here at the church, for Christmas. So last week, this week, and next week, you'll have an opportunity to put tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> and feel so good about yourself. So please, remember how much fun it is to give. Merry Christmas. Are there any others? Becky has something. Thank you. Um, every year, the United Women in Faith, um, we're watching what you all are doing in the congregation. And we have the honor of presenting a pin to somebody that um, has gone way above and beyond. And you could see him running around the church today. Um, would Roger Aldrich please come forward? Oh, don't act like you don't do anything. Roger, on behalf of the United Women in Faith, we are presenting you with a pen. 
and also a certificate. And we appreciate and we notice everything that you've done. You are welcome. Thank you, Roger. Are there any others? Yes, Mary Jo. I have a joy. Our son, daughter-in-law, and grandson came from Oklahoma yesterday. They stayed less than 24 hours, but were able to celebrate the Cavalier Christmas. And um, our grandson played the piano for my mother at the lodge, and it was mm. a great joy. Aww. When, when I grow up, I want to be just like Roger Aldridge. <laughs> yeah, I do. There's a brother in Christ you can, you can get behind. I'm serious about that. Amen. Uh, last Sunday, I wasn't here. I can't remember why I wasn't here. Was I sick? Or... I was? Yeah, I, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just lifting my mom up, and, you know, she's in heaven now, which gives me great joy, such great joy. And the other thing is, uh, just want to say, I thank the church family, I thank all of you for surrounding our family in Christian love. It, there was such an enormous outpouring, it was overwhelming, and we thank you. That's joy. Any others? I just have one quick, um, I guess I'll follow with Tom's. Um, I'm really proud of everyone that does so much for the church. Unfortunately, I lost a, a really close friend um, the other day, so I hate to bring it down, or but um, he was there for me when I really, really needed somebody, um, and I guess words just don't have enough meaning that I can come to, you know, come with. I think Tom's looking at me right now um, to say I will always love him. Um, I will miss him. And uh, I'll see him again. So please uh, just think of all your friends and family that you love and hold so close because we really need each other. Thank you so much for everything you guys do. Are there any others? Then I will offer um, a joy and a concern. The joy is that I'm feeling better, and I thank you for all of your prayers. I have felt them, and, um, and I appreciate them so much. I have appreciated that um, I've had chicken noodle soup brought to me by John Teal. I had chicken noodle soup brought to me by um, Paul and Catherine Wick. I had um, banana bread brought to me by um, Tom and Pam Brandt. I had um, groceries dropped off for me, especially popsicles. I ate a lot of popsicles in the last week and a half because that was the only thing that soothed the throat. Um, and I appreciate um, Pe Peg for, do for bringing me groceries, Becky for bringing me groceries, and I appreciate Deb Oliver for not only bringing me groceries, but Deb also went to the pharmacy for me on multiple uh, occasions. And um, I appreciate all of that love that I felt. It's been horrible. Um, as you, I, I don't know if you know this, but I have asthma, and so um, I, I think that the asthma kind of compounded that, that COVID, and then on top of that, I went and got strep throat, um, and so it was horrible, horrible, horrible. I actually ended up going to um, the emergency room um, a week ago, fr um, Friday, and so, I mean, it was just, just horrible. So. I appreciate all of your prayers. I, I have felt them. I have felt the love. Um, you are um, a joy in the sight of God. Don't ever 
forget that. Okay? You are a joy and you are loved. You are loved by a God whose unrelenting grace will never, ever let you go. Okay. Enough of that. The other thing that I liked to say and ask for your prayers and your grace is we are at 10 o'clock, but we still have some service to do. And so I understand that services have been running a little bit late, and, I, and I'm working on that and, and praying that you're, you're going to offer me grace as we move through some of these things. But you know something? When we're in church, for me, time stands still. And so I think that I don't think about it very much. But I also know that all of you, you know, you have places to go and people to see and things to do. And so we're working on it. So I, I pray that you will offer me grace in the, mid, in the middle of all of that. So those are those things. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, grant us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. O oh, Holy One, we pray continually for all of those in our church and in our community and in neighboring communities who are in need of your healing and peace. Most especially, Lord, we lift into your care Deb Aldridge, who is grieving this day the loss of a friend, friends who have so much meaning in our lives. We know that love does not die, but we ask for comfort for Deb. We pray, Lord, for all of those who mourn this day, those who are suffering illness of all kinds, because our fragile human bodies are weak sometimes and are afflicted by illness. We pray, O oh Lord, for those in care centers and nursing homes, those suffering from persecution or have had violent acts committed against them. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are hungry and poor. Inside of our, our concerns, O oh Lord, we are also oh, overjoyed by the many blessings that you bestow upon us. Joyful and thankful for the, for the servants of the church who serve in so many different ways. They have answered your call. They have said yes to the ministries of your church. For this, we are so joyful. We are thankful that families can gather and that the Cavaliers had a wonderful Christmas celebration. Lord, we are thankful for Christian love poured out for the Brant family. We are thankful, O oh Lord, for our family and friends, for laughter and joy, for our baptism that reminds us of resurrection promise, but mostly for your amazing love, your amazing grace that makes all things new. For all of these that have been spoken and those that remain on our hearts, Lord, may all of these fill your loving arms of comfort holding them and your healing peace surrounding them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite the choir. Let us prepare our hearts for communion as the choir will come forward and sing, We Remember.
just for the sake of just for the sake of not Thing over the communion table this morning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it right here. That would make me feel better, anyway. I kind of like the simplicity of this, don't you? As we prepare to proclaim our faith through the receiving of communion. Let us rejoice in the light of the Prince of Peace, whose very life and death and resurrection was so that we might have life and peace. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we first came to believe. The one who came as a child long ago will awaken our hearts and give us peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give our thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away our love and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be light to the nations. You scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their, thr- from their thor- thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things, and the rich you send, empty ha- send away empty. Your own son came among us as servants to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to death, to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which our Lord gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And so with your people on earth. Hold on. (laughs) And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The table is ready, and all are welcome. Come. May my servers please come forward. Come, the table is ready. And to make sure Santa finds his way, an appropriate amount of Christmas lights is in order at $433. A live Christmas tree this year run to an average of $90.38. Santa fills Christmas stockings and a six-pack of bows containing at the fireplace now cost $38.71, we're told. And if not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse is to be guaranteed,
that you can be as a business owner? Well, I think anybody listening out there, I mean, you've got a savvy group of people that follow your show, so they're going to know that there are supply chain problems everywhere. I invite you to stand to pray the prayer after receiving communion with me. Almighty God, giver of all gifts, we are blessed to be guests at your table. Let our hearts and souls be renewed in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sure knowledge of your grace. May the mystery of our faith that Jesus came, was crucified, and will come again be truly enough to satisfy us in this Advent season. Amen. You may be seated. As the, as the ushers prepare to come forward, I usually say something like, bring your, bring your uh, time, your talents, your service, your gifts, your witness, and that all of these are acceptable unto the Lord. And this morning, as we collect offering, I invite Greg to share his talents with our congregation as he plays Christmas song on his trumpet.
Please join me in our prayer offering, our offering prayer. Holy God, as your word is opened and read, grant us peace of heart and mind despite the disquiet of our lives. Give us faith to trust the word you speak to us and embolden us with courage and power to follow where you lead us. Amen. Let's join our voices in singing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Hymn 240. I don't know about all of you, but that was wonderful. I am looking here at our, our stable, and I'm getting excited for next Sunday. I can't wait to see what the kids are going to do. I also wanted to say thank you for the kids. These were in my office, and every single one, it's a Get Well card. Every single one of the kids from, from WOW signed it. Oh, my heart. And, and this one is specifically from Mr. Houston. Thank you, Houston. Love you, buddy. <laughs> Hear these words of benediction and blessing. As we depart from this space, may we continually seek the unrelenting grace of God that pursues us, forgives us, and sanctifies us, having been born again from above, and share that kind of love with a world in need. And may the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and always, and all God's children say, Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Mm -hmm.